Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 82 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, I am fucking tired. I've been working hard for you cunts on uh, a lot of things, um, and uh, I can't really talk about any of them. This, some new things have just come out of nowhere. That uh, will be announced in the next couple of weeks, but you know me, I'm always hustling, trying to get new shit. I'm not going to talk about mystery things, it's fucking boring. I mean, my last mystery thing was a special, so this one's going to be also good. <laughs> um, so, what have I been doing this week? You know what I've been, I've been doing? First of all, what? Oh, how selfish of me, talking about myself once again on my own podcast. How are you? Are you well? How was your week? Did you enjoy last last week's episode with Frenchie? That was a bit of a blast from the past. That was that was I think that was recorded before I even launched the crowdfund of the special because I wanted to release it when he put out his special. Um, did you enjoy that one? Yeah, let me know. Did you enjoy his special? Also, let me know. I I I fucking love it. Let me tell you about Frenchie's special. There's two points that I absolutely lose my mind at. One of them is within like the first five minutes or so, the part with the popcorn, you'll know it when you see it, made me fucking cry. The disrespect of that man. (laughs) And then the second point, uh, right at the end, the Frozen song. I saw that live and and I I was hyperventilating. It's some of the funniest shit that I've ever seen anybody do live is that Frozen song. So I highly recommend Frenchie Special. Go and check that shit out. And uh, it's uh, definitely inspired me to uh, to really work hard on my own. I've been uh, gigging as much as possible. I'm sorry I haven't been uh, too good on the videos, guys. I do have some videos ready to go. I've got a uh, Lure Review all filmed. I'm going to edit it as soon as I finish recording this podcast. And I'm going to get that up next week. And then I have Bi-Monthly Bull all ready and written. Um, I'm thinking because I haven't done a video for two weeks, I'm probably going to put out Lou Review on Tuesday and then Bi-Monthly Bull on Thursday and then go back to weekly just so I can put out four videos a month. I'm not very good at weekly, but I am good at catching up. I want to do like four a month is kind of my goal, but I do appreciate your patience. I've just been um, really focusing on my on my material for the special. I'm trying to... I'm trying to get everything word perfect. I did four gigs this week, and it was, and I was just doing the same joke again and again and again and again. And I'm getting fucking sick of it, but I think I have it. I've nailed it because some some of the material that I'm doing is like a couple of years old, and I and generally when I do jokes, I just stop doing them after I've done them once. Um, but you know, because it's going in the special now, I have to kind of relive it and remember that space where I was in when I wrote it and 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 also make it better because I'm a better comedian now than when I did write it so it's all just basically a lengthy process of getting everything fucking word perfect and it's a it's a you know I, I can't complain it's the best shit ever it's my it's it's the dream so um oh dude you know what I what show I did last night it was fucking crazy I did a vaudeville show uh, I had no idea that we had these in uh in Australia if you don't know a vaudeville show and I didn't know this, it's, it's basically, you know, it's basically a freak talent show with burlesque, uh, and burlesque is basically stripping, but they, instead of playing, instead of poles and pussies, they have, like, nipple tassels and 50s jazz music, (laughs) and they pretend that they're not stripping, but I did this vaudeville show, it's uh, at this venue called Speakeasy HQ, um, it's right in the middle of the city in Melbourne. I, I highly recommend it if you've never been, and I've never, I had never heard of it either until I got booked there. But basically, what it is is, is I went up there, and it's, it's just I was the only comedian on the night. Everybody else was just a weird fucking talent. So it was the strangest night I've ever been involved in. I went up there. Um, I was third on. So the first guy was no joke nailing nails into his own face <laughs> and balancing ladders in his mouth, like full-on step ladders. Then the second guy was a dude who played the ukulele and sung about, I'm pretty sure it was a, it was a song about some sailor killing himself because he was gay, and I had to follow that. <laughs> so everyone's really sad. So I had to follow a, a dude putting nails in his face and then an incredibly depressing ukulele song. And then I get up and I'm like, oh, I don't have any talents. I just tell dick jokes. <laughs> but uh, it was a real fun night. And then who else did they have on? They had um, 
They had this music magician that was like spitting fire. They had uh, uh, what else did they have? They had uh, oh, Dami Lou Chevelle was there. She played a few songs. You can check her out on YouTube. She was she was fucking incredible. She was just a singer, and she had this really funny song about sex as well. And then uh, and then after that. They closed out the third bracket with a whole bunch of burlesque dancing and like, you know, and they, they full on did it. They were doing like little strip shows and they're wearing feather boas and all this stuff. And, and it was, it was, um, a very interesting culture of, of the room because obviously with comedy, when you do a stand up room, everybody's just a comedian. So we're just talking about jokes and stuff, but backstage, but at this place, when I was backstage, um, the, the guy takes me there and he goes, so this is the dressing room. And I'm like, I don't, I don't need to dress. I've got no props. I'm ready. It's all in my head. <laughs> but I went into the, the, the dressing room cause he said, this is backstage. I'm like, okay, well I'll wait there. And then I get in there and uh, I was the only one there cause I was kind of early. And then all of these girls started coming in and they just start getting naked. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Am I, should I leave? And they just go, no honey, it's fine. You're, you're on tonight. I'm like, yeah, he goes, that's fine. Just don't look too long. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, okay, cool. This is very interesting backstage. I've never seen tits backstage at a, at a comedy show, that's for sure. Um, but it was an awesome night, and, and the venue is incredible. Like, like all of the staff dress up as, like, 50s... I don't, I don't even know how to explain it, but everyone's dressed up. All the guys are wearing vests and shirts, and all the girls are wearing, like, skimpy dress kind of things that are really structured, and they're, like, red, and they wear little hats... And they all yell. And they don't serve food. They serve like... Uh, what did they have? They had hot pretzels served on a sword. So there was, this, there was this chick just walking around in a fucking cocktail dress going, Pretzels on a sword! Pretzels on a sword! And I was like, dude, I want a fucking pretzel on a sword. <laughs> it was really, really sick. Oh, excuse me. I need to find my fucking inhaler. It's somewhere over here. I'm just leaving the microphone. I'm looking for my fucking puffer. I used to I used to edit these out. I do this every single episode, at like at least once, and I used to edit them out. And then I'm just like, ah, fuck you! I've got asthma. You can deal with it. Anyway, so um, I did that show, and it was it was awesome. And I'm really looking forward to going back. It's it's called Speakeasy HQ. I'm pretty sure they run they run shows from like Monday to to Sunday night every single night. Um, and it was just great. And you know what? The the demographic was so different because generally when you do comedy nights. In Melbourne, unless you're doing the Comics Lounge, which is absolutely the best, where people pay because they're seeing comedy, you generally get up on stage in a bar, and people are like, oh, what? There's comedy on? Ah, oh, I don't really want to... I, I, I kind of came here to talk to my friends. I don't want to hear this guy talk about his dick. <laughs> so you have to win over the audience. But this place, it was like paying customers, and, and they're there for a show, so it was very good. But the demographic of it was so strange like it's you know what it is because it's a burlesque show the audience is like middle-aged couples that seem to be a little bit sick of each other and they want to see some sexy stuff but they don't have the balls to ask the other one to go to the strippers so they go to the burlesque show and pretend they're not there to perv on someone other than their wife. <laughs> that's what it is. I think uh, that's that's really what the fucking demographic is. And you know what? Good on him. All right, because that's the first that's the that's the first step to asking your wife if you can fuck somebody else. Is is you start off at burlesque shows. You start off pretty light, where you got the burlesque show here, and then you go to the strippers, and then next thing you know, you're on fucking Craigslist.com. Hey, who's going to fuck my wife? <laughs> so, yeah, if you, uh, you want to catch an interesting show, check out Speakeasy HQ. And uh, within six months, some dude will be running a train on your wife. Uh, so, you know what? That's, that's really why this podcast is perfect for advertisers, you know? Right? Because <laughs> isn't that a fucking good tagline? Speakeasy HQ. One minute you're enjoying some burlesque, and the next minute three dudes are fucking your wife. Um, oh, speaking of ads, I'm thinking about getting ads on the podcast, guys. What do you think? Honestly, I want to know what you think. Um, uh, this, this company has reached out to me, um, and they're like, hey, we, we organize sponsorships for podcasts and, and we can get discount codes and 
blah, blah, blah. And I've been reached out by a few companies and I'm always such an asshole to them because I just, I just, I'm a control freak. I remember one company was like, hey, can we put in pre-recorded ads into your podcast? And I'm like, can't, I've heard what it sounds like when you listen to Spotify and you don't have premium. I am not putting that shit in my podcast. Could you imagine like halfway through me searching for an inhaler, you would have just been interrupted with, join this for fucking $10 off. And it's some like American woman voice and then there's shitty commercial music in the background and it's way louder than me. It's like, fuck off. I'm not put, I'm not ruining my podcast with that shit. So I was like, either I read the ads or no. And then they got back to me and they're like, okay, you can read the ads. That's fine. Here's a script for the ad. And it was like, and and it was like some bullshit thing of, of me being, I can't, I I won't name the the business because that's just rude, but let's say it was uh, a fucking, uh, I don't know, a shoe company. And I'd be like, Tom's shoes are the best shoes that I've ever worn. I I can honestly say that I own a lot of pairs of shoes and Tom's shoes are better than any other shoes. And that's just a lie because fucking I wear Air Max. There's no way I'm wearing Tom's shoes. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, look, I'll read this, but only if I can say cunt in the middle of it and also take the piss out of your dumb copy. And then they were like, no, you have to read it word for word. So I was like, all right, fuck off. Go home. If I can't make the ads funny, not being on my podcast. And then this other dude reached out to me like a year later from a new place, and and it seems to be much smaller. And uh, I spoke to him on the phone. He seems like a cool guy. And uh, we're talking about getting ads on the podcast. And basically, my rules are... They're not going at the start because there is nothing worse than you sit down to listen to a podcast and it starts off with fucking this podcast was brought to you by Apple Music. And it's like, can't I don't care about Apple Music. I want to hear Lewis yell about some fucking thing that doesn't matter. All right, that's what I'm here for. I don't want to hear ads within the th- first 30 seconds. I want to hear, that's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear about ads, right? So I was like, look, I'll put them in the middle. And I'm not doing more than three an episode. And they can't go for like five minutes each. And I want to be able to swear and make fun of them if I want. And if they don't like it, they can go away and not advertise again. But that's my rules. And he was like, yeah, sweet. I reckon that'll work. So let, honestly, let me know your thoughts on the po- on ads on the podcast. Because the reason why I'm doing it is because th- this podcast is getting bigger. And the bigger it gets, the more expensive it costs to host. And the only way to make it cheaper is either delete episodes, which I'm just not going to do, or I can figure out a way to monetize it. And that's with ads or, uh, I don't know, if Patreon jumps up quite a bit, then it'll cover it. But yeah, that's basically what I'm doing. So I'm thinking I'm going to have ads on the podcast in the next coming weeks. So do let me know uh, what you guys think. Email me at podcast at loosebeers.com. But I can promise you that I'm going to make them as funny as possible. I'm not just going to fucking fill this thing with ads and turn it into the Lewis Spears' brand recommendations of the month. Shit that he hasn't even tried. (laughs) Um, What else did I do this week? Oh, I went to VidCon. Yes, I went to VidCon last weekend. I didn't get to talk about it last week because we had the Frenchie podcast, but I went to VidCon. um, And I went there for just one day. I was just there because it was... Look, guys... I'm going to be straight up honest, VidCon was fucking incredibly fun for me. It was amazing for me because I got to go backstage with with all of the VIP creator sections. I got to meet all of the YouTubers that I've like, that I know of, but just all of the people that I really like, but I would never ever meet because if it were not for VidCon, like I met Superwog, um, I met, uh, I met Wenji, who's like, one of the biggest YouTubers in Australia. She's she makes she's basically makes play school videos. Like her fans were no joke, ten years old, and she has eight and a half million subs. I would never meet her in my life, but I met her and she was really nice. Um, who else did I meet? Uh, yeah, I met Superwog. I met the Rucka Rucka Boys, and they were great. Been meaning to meet them for ages. And then you know just the normal crew like Frenchie and Neil and and Luke was there, and and all of the, all of those guys. Jimmy Jackson was there as well. And um, Roundabout Crew too. You know, fucking everybody was there. Um, but honestly, if I was a ticket holder, like just a regular ticket holder that that could just get in the places where if you where you could get in, it would have been really disappointing. And I heard that from a few people actually, because it was just 
it felt very half baked. Like it felt very small. They only filled half of the space that they rented, and there was actually literally about eight stalls. Two of them were for YouTuber merchandise. One of them was a map of the convention center. Not that you fucking needed it. And then one was like for selling cameras. And I don't know. It was just, um, honestly, I feel like if I was just a regular fan who couldn't go to the all access areas, I really would have been disappointed with it. And, and I, the only reason I was allowed to go into the all access places was I fucking snuck past <laughs> security with all of the boys that that were given uh, all access passes. Apparently, if you say cunt too much, you don't get invited, even if you have more subscribers than most of the people back there. But uh, hey, that's that's VidCon's prerogative. That's not me. But um, I did film, uh, I filmed a vlog there that will be out uh, this week on the second channel. And I also filmed a segment for Bi-Monthly Bull, which I'm going to aim to put out on Thursday. So there'll definitely be a review on Tuesday, and then I'm going to try and get Bi-Monthly Bull out on Thursday. Otherwise, it'll be out the next week. But yeah, I, I honestly really, really enjoyed myself. But for if you were just a regular person, and I don't I don't say that like I'm, I'm a special... Like, if, if you're just a fucking regular shit cunt without any subscribers, you know, a subhuman loser... Um, yeah, I, I don't think I would have enjoyed it at all. It was very strange. Oh, I also met Auntie Donna. Well, not all of them. I met, uh, I met Broden and I met Zach. I didn't meet Mark, but they were both very nice. They said they liked my stuff and I had a great talk to Broden. Um, I met Zach for about a second and then I didn't see where Mark was, but, um, that was good because I've been meaning to meet those guys for ages because they're, they're I, I just really like their stuff and I know they do stand up all the time. Um, and they, they performed at VidCon. And god damn, let me tell you, the fucking performances at VidCon, on the on the Friday, no, the Saturday night, they had, like, all of the featured guests get up to do performances, and it was like watching, it was like watching a bad open mic, but it was full of thousands of, like, 13-year-old girls, and I felt sorry for the YouTubers, because... Uh, for speaking from experience, doing YouTube and performing on stage are almost completely different. Like, there's hardly any crossover at all. Like, there's barely any transferable skills other than writing. And to put a whole bunch of... To put, like, 30 non-performers on stage in a row is just... I don't know, it was not good... I had to leave halfway through that one because it was just painful to watch all of these people who were not performers try and entertain people... Um, like Auntie Donna got up and they were amazing. They were incredible, but they just took the piss the whole time. They were just screaming. And, uh, I, I think I remember one at one time, one of them was like, give us a yell if you're over 13. And then nobody yelled. And then at one point they did a joke that didn't really land as hard as they would like. So Broden yells out, we've only got 160,000 subs, which I thought was just hilarious. They just took the piss, but... There was, who else, who else was performing? Like, they had one where the Roundabout crew got up and they did, they played a game of charades with three other YouTubers that didn't know each other. And it was like Australia versus America. And the Roundabout crew were very, very funny. They've got some experience with live stuff. But the, the three American YouTubers, I had no idea who the fuck they were. But they were just... I don't know, they just, it just wasn't very good, it was awkward to watch, and at some point the American YouTubers cheated and looked at the cards, and then, so, nobody, whoever chose the topics for charades, just didn't, just pick the most obscure fucking things on the planet, nobody could guess them, they were incredibly hard, and they were all like, American culture topics as well. Like, it was very clear that whoever organized the charade topics was an American who had never been to Australia. So the audience, the audience who could read what the topics were didn't even know what they were. Like, one at one point, I think a popular TV series from America came on the screen, and I could actually hear people going, what? What's that? I've, I've never heard of that. And then you had to... Then they expected these fucking people to, sh to charade a thing they've never heard of that they couldn't even explain with words. And at one point, I think the topic was Hugh Jackman because that's probably the only Australian thing that the American people had ever fucking heard of. Like, put Hugh Jackman in there, he's from Australia. That was the thing that they had to charade. So the roundabout crew start doing it 
And then the American people start doing it. And within half a second, one of the American YouTubers just yells out, Hugh Jackman, like way too quick. So he cheated. He looked at the card, yelled out the name, and then he admitted to cheating. And then he just got booed. (laughs) It was the best thing I've ever seen. Just a whole bunch of 13-year-old girls booing their favorite YouTuber for cheating at charades. It was amazing. Um, but I suppose the good thing about VidCon was how many of you guys that I met, I had lots and lots of people coming up to me and, and congratulating me with the, with the crowdfund special and everything. And that was really, really nice to hear that people were paying attention to it and, and, and to hear and to meet people who had contributed and were like, oh, we can't wait for the show in November, blah, 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 all that kind of shit. Um, so that was really cool. It was great to meet all of you guys. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, there'll be a vlog out. Um, and you know what? I, I, I really, uh... What I took away from VidCon is uh, I can put out a lot more content, man. Like looking at all these people with 10 million subs, I look I look at these people and, and like I like I look at the amount of content that I've released this year, and I'm like, you know what? If I was putting out videos weekly from January to now, I would be at half a million. There's no excuse. So I'm really gonna try and uh, be much more consistent with content, guys. <clears throat> um, that's that's the goal from from now. I think. Um, I'm also going to be starting up the second channel again. Uh, well, I'm going to start putting content on the second channel. I'm going to start the vlog again. Um, if you go back to 2015, that was my last vlog episode. And uh, when people go, when I say vlog, <coughs> everybody thinks that Jake Paul shit. What's up, guys? <laughs> vlog, vlog. And selfie filming yourself. I'm not into that. I just don't like filming myself in public. Uh, I don't really like doing Snapchats and all that kind of shit, but... What I really enjoyed doing was my vlog back in 2015 where I kind of just filmed filmed my life without context and I, I was almost not on screen very much or at least I wasn't filming myself unless I was really explaining what was about to happen. So it's hard to explain but have a look at my vlogs from 2015. I think you guys will get a handle of it. The reason why I stopped them is because I was filming it on my shitty Android phone so it looked like garbage and I also had a job. I just couldn't maintain the amount of editing and filming that it took. I had to focus on the main channel. But now, um, what I've done is I've gone out and I've bought myself a little uh, handy camera, um, a point and shoot. I got a Canon G7X Mark II. And holy shit, ladies and gentlemen, this is a beautiful camera. If you guys are actually looking at a camera for, for vlogs or for filming or for even taking photos, I really recommend the Canon G7X Mark II. It's beautiful. It's about $900, so it's a little bit pricey, but um, it's just the simplest fucking camera. It, you just It's literally a point and shoot. You pull it out, you turn it on, you take a photo, and it looks incredible. Um, <clears throat> I've only had it for like two days now, and I'm doing a little bit of filming for the vlog. I filmed at the Vaudeville show and uh, a little bit of uh, the weekend with my girl. And it's just beautiful, man. I really recommend this camera. And it's so small as well. Because that's the thing. I could have, I could film a vlog with my big camera, but then i got to carry it everywhere with me. This thing literally just fits in my pocket. I can pull it out and start recording. Um, and it's very, you know, inconspicuous. Like, it doesn't make everybody go, fuck, look at that guy with his $5,000 camera rig. Maybe I should rob him. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the vlogs are coming back soon. And... Uh, I think the vlogs are going to get very interesting because, as I said, I've got a very interesting project coming up soon that'll be starting this year that uh, you'll hear about probably in the next two or three weeks, I'm thinking. We're just waiting to get everything confirmed. But that's not important, guys. What is important is the time has come, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm not scared anymore. I'm tired of being ashamed. I'm tired of being made fun of. I'm, I'm s- sick and tired, I'm fed up with not being allowed to like Coldplay. I like Coldplay. I've, I've said it. I thoroughly enjoy a lot of Coldplay music. And I don't understand why I should be ashamed of that. Every time I'm like, dude, my girl hates Coldplay. She can't tell me why. I tried playing Coldplay yesterday. She turned it off. I'm like, what's wrong with Coldplay? I played Paradise. Dude, that's the best song ever. Go, stop this podcast. Go and listen to Paradise. Because we're in para, para, paradise. Best song ever. Yellow? And it's all yellow. What, what's not to like about Coldplay? It's one of the best bands ever. There's a reason why they sell that many fucking albums. is because they're good. 
I don't understand the hate behind them. And I'm, I'm sick and tired of, of people thinking that I should hide my passion for Coldplay. Do you know, I've liked Coldplay for about... I think I truly realized that I fucking really liked them three years ago. And I have not bought an album of theirs because I've, I'm because people make fun of me for it. I, that, I never let people do that to me. I never get controlled by what other people think of me. But for some reason... I've been tricked into being ashamed of liking Coldplay, and I've had enough. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm out of the closet. I like Coldplay. And if you if you don't, you're wrong. It's an incorrect opinion. Your, your opinion is false. They're a great band. They make some banger fucking tunes. Go and listen to Yellow and tell me you don't fucking feel like giving a girl a hug. Huh? <laughs> Have a listen to Paradise and tell me you don't get goosebumps during the chorus. Thinking about how good your life could be. Huh? Go go and listen to some fucking Coldplay and come back and try and tell me they're not one of the greatest bands ever. In fact, you know what? I'm going to buy one of their albums right now. I'm going to I'm just getting up on my phone. And I'm gonna put, I'll get it on the on the laptop. Hang on, let me move the microphone. I'm gonna buy a Coldplay album right now, live on the podcast. And I bet there's like half of you guys screaming, "Don't do it! Don't buy a Coldplay album, dude!" You know, you know what? I've been I've been listening to fucking Australian rap since 2012 when it was very uncool, and and I didn't give a fuck that people thought I was an idiot. But for some reason, I was more scared of people finding out that I like Coldplay. Then people finding out that I like fucking don't fuck with cursor. <laughs> so here we go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna buy cold play, and I'm gonna purchase it. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna save it to my library on Apple Music. I'm gonna purchase it with money. All right. Fuck. They got a. <laughs> they got a lot of albums. I don't, know <laughs> I don't know which one I should get. Um. Shit, they've got like 20 albums. Oh, now I'm now I'm confused. Ah, oh, this is hard. What is You know what? I'm going to oh, Fuck. I should have I should have uh I I'm, I've jumped in in the moment. I'm now I'm just I've been paralyzed by choice. I don't know there's I didn't know Coldplay had like no joke like 10 albums. Well, I can't buy 10 albums. It's like $200. Ah. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna buy the album that has yellow on it. Oh, maybe I want the album that has Paradise on it. Oh no, because I really like that song Paradise. Look it up. Milo Xiloto. That's the album. Well, that's a shitty album names album name. What's the what's the Coldplay album that has yellow on it? I'll pick whichever one has the better name. Yellow. Play. Coldplay Yellow. Ah, uh, fucking... I started searching my library, and I don't have anything in my library, obviously, because I'm too embarrassed to buy a Coldplay. Where are we? Okay. Coldplay Yellow. Parachutes. Parachutes, Milo Xiloto. Ah, oh, dude, this one's a banger. Ah. Oh. Oh, I love that song, dude. Uh, dude, I love this fucking song. We live in a beautiful world. Yeah, I'm buying this one. <laughs> so if you guys thought, dude, you'll just listen to like 15 seconds of one Coldplay song. That one where it goes, we live. In a beautiful world. Try and tell me that's not like the pinnacle of music. Sixteen ninety nine for ten tracks. That's expensive. I don't give a fuck. I just bought it now. Oh no, I haven't. I'm gonna type in my password. Your Apple ID or password is correct. Incorrect. The, why is the world trying to stop me from enjoying Coldplay? What the fuck's my Apple password? Is that it? Oh, fuck. You know what it is? It's because every time I forget my password, 
it doesn't let me reset it to an old one. So I'll forget my password. And oh, there it is. There we go. Are you sure you want to buy parachutes? <laughs> but I choose like, dude, are you sure you want to listen to Coldplay? Yes, buy. Ah, dude, as soon as I finish this podcast, I'm going to go listen to fucking We Live in a Beautiful World, and it's all yellow, and I'm going to love it. What's this song? Trouble. Oh, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't know the words, but I know the melody. Oh, dude, this is the best song. I made such a good choice. It's like three bangers. Yeah, I don't know the words, but man, fucking tell... Dude, that's like three songs that you just heard that is like... You would have heard that on the radio in like 2010. 2000 even. Man, that's old. Fucking what a great choice I just made. No regrets. I'm going to listen to that after the podcast. And you know what? If you if you actually have a reason why you don't like Coldplay, I want you to email me at podcast at loosebeers.com. Tell me why you don't like Coldplay, and I'll tell you exactly why you're wrong, all right? I challenge anybody to do that shit. So there you go. Learn something new about me. Coldplay's number one fan, Louis Spears. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> all right i think it is uh, almost time for the worst part of the podcast but before i get into that um i wanted to say that uh thank you to all of the people who have booked tickets to the new to the new zealand tour uh ticket sales are going very well better than i thought to be honest we're only doing small venues because it's my first time there so basically the plan is to just do small venues the first year sell them out, then come back the next year and do something bigger. So ticket sales are going really well for New Zealand. Really appreciate everybody coming out. <clears throat> I am sorry that uh, I'm not going to Wellington. Um, unfortunately, with New Zealand, this is the first tour that I'm getting done by somebody else. I'm not booking this tour. Normally, I book all of the tours myself. I put all the money up myself. This time, I'm being taken over I'm, I'm getting flown out by another company. They're putting the money up. They're booking all the shows, all that kind of stuff. I, I don't like doing that. I don't like giving up control. But um, I think that if it's a country that I've never been to, I've never been to, I don't know the culture, I think that I do need to do that. I do need to get somebody who knows New Zealand to do that kind of thing. Because, you know, Australia, I know Australians. I get it. I've, been, I, I've lived here my whole life. I know how to... I know what the major cities are, I know how hard it is to travel here and all that kind of shit, so that's why I can do it myself, because I know the place, but I don't know New Zealand, so I've gotten somebody else to do it, and they decided not to do Wellington. I wouldn't have decided that, but that's the choice that they made, and unfortunately, that's what it is, and, and we won't be able to add any new shows because of this project that is coming up, I'm going to have to come home to work on that. So, I, my apologies for not coming to Wellington, but um, to the people who were wondering if it will be um, added, it will not be. So, uh, I know a few people have, have been wanting to travel to the other shows, but they wanted to make sure that Wellington was not happening. So, it's not happening. So, if you do want to travel to one of the other shows, if you're from Wellington, you feel free to, to do that because it won't be added. You, yeah, you won't like book a flight and then be like, fuck, I wasted my money. Um... But it, next year, I'll be making sure that I will come to Wellington. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, New Zealand's going really well. If you want to get tickets to that, it's loosebeers.com slash gigs. I would fucking love to, uh, to, to see you. It's my first international tour. Uh, I feel weird saying that because it's just New Zealand. But, you know, it, it, meets, it meets the dictionary definition of an inter, you know, international tour. So it's my first international shows anyway. I'm really excited to, uh, I don't know, just to go and do a show. And uh, see if you guys laugh in a different accent. <laughs> that would be great. If you guys fucking laughed in Fush and Chups language. Oh, I'm not even going to do any of that shit either. Um, Alright, what else do I want to talk about? Um, oh yeah, just quickly before I get into the... Um, Worst part of the podcast. I wanted to say, if for for bi monthly bull for epis for every episode, I'm trying to leave the house and do a vox pop or a stunt at an event. So so far, I have the vaccine one, and in the second one, I had uh, 
the Comet Convention. The third one will be VidCon, but I'm running out of events. So if I'm, and I'm talking like it can be it can be like a car rally or a, a, an obscure hobby or a protest, especially or a politician doing a press conference. If you hear about anything along those lines that you think would make an interesting bi-monthly bull segment, please do message it to my page on Facebook or tweet it to me, and I'll have a look at it and I'll take note of it. Just because I don't have a team looking out for these things, so it's kind of hard. Often I'll find out about things that I've missed. Like I know right now, today, currently, there's a big uh, right-wing versus left-wing rally that I would have loved to have gone to and filmed a thing, but I just didn't hear about it. So if you ever hear about protest events, conventions... Uh, politicians coming, any anything that you think I could make funny by turning up and, and interviewing people or ruining it or doing a stunt, even a book signing, anything like that, message it to my page. I'll have a look at it and then it might make it into Buy Monthly Ball. That'd be really great just because it's, it's hard because what I'm doing, it's like a TV show thing where you generally have a research team. Obviously, I don't have a research team, so that's kind of, you guys can be the research team. So if you ever see anything that you think would be interesting for me to fuck around at, please do send it my way, even if you think it's not exactly good. Uh, I If I think it's funny, I can make it funny, all right? So with that being said, Let's get into the worst part of the podcast. If you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is uh, classified by the United Nations as a crime against humanity, and it is banned in the usage of any kind of wars, any kind of battles, and any kind of interrogations. If you do so, it is a war crime, and it's a crime against humanity, and the the UN will sanction you. Unfortunately, miscellaneous bit at the end when operated and wielded by me, is more powerful than the, than the UN, and they and they are too scared to come after me because they know the moment the UN sanctions me for this part of the podcast, I'm going to start bringing them into it, and the UN will be fucking over. So, turn off now, because I'm about to answer some questions from the listeners. If you'd like to send in a question, email me at podcast at com. Let's get into the first question. All right, so this one comes from a lovely girl... Um, called Sarah, and that's actually her real name. I haven't actually just changed it to Sarah, that's what she's told me. And uh, the subject line of this email is, I fucked my bus driver. <laughs> Let's get into it. Hey Lewis, I'm Sarah. I know I have a basic name, but it's funny as fuck hearing you refer to every girl as Sarah. Here's a story I figured you might be able to give some input on at the end of your podcast. They're really cool, and I've enjoyed binge listening to them recently, apart from the fact I look crazy laughing to myself in public. Thank you very much, Sarah. How sweet of you. Anyway, I fucked my bus driver. Straight to the point. I love it, Sarah. All right, here we go. It all started when I was bored one night a few weeks ago with my friends and started flicking through Tinder. In two hours, two hours! How horny were you, Sarah? Fuck, I couldn't spend two hours on Facebook. In two hours, I, fi- I found a guy and I was on my way to his house. Oh, so you, you needed like some urgent emergency dick. Like you were like, I need dick within the next three hours. So you like after the with the first hour you were looking for tens trying to match with some tens half an hour after that you were looking for sevens and then come hour 2 you're like fuck it I'll fuck a bus driver I'll root a guy who works at McDonald's I'm I'm going to if I get to hour 3 I'm just going to walk down the street and fuck the first homeless guy I see <laughs> Um, in two hours I found a guy and I was on my way to his house while my friends went off to the pub that was nearby. The plan was to have a quick shag and then I would meet them for the rest of the night. Sarah, you sound like a very fun person to hang out with. Hey, I'm just gonna go and fuck someone. I'll meet you guys up in 20 minutes, maybe an hour. Depends how quick I can make him come, alright? See you in a bit. You sound like a legend. Uh, anyway... I went over, had some fan-fucking-tastic sex, and then I joined my friends and got shit-faced. Yeah, that's exactly what I just described. <laughs> you went and just had a quick fuck, and then you're like, Right, I just got some dick, now let's have get pissed! Um, a few days later, college started. I live just over an hour away from my college, and because I can't drive and there's no trains, I have to get the bus. I feel sorry for you. So I rock up to the bus station looking like shit because it's 5 a.m. and I'm still and I'm still asleep and I have to and I've had to walk 20 minutes already to get there. And it's the same guy. I'm confused. Uh, 
I had to walk 20 minutes to get there. Ah, oh, I get on the bus and the driver is the same guy from a few nights ago. I'm going to call him Steve for the sake of the story. All right. I recognize him. He recognizes me. Oh, that's fucked. I fail at being casual and trying to make a joke that it's shit, but he lets me on for free. So I'm like, okay, hell yeah. Save some dollars and because buses are expensive as fuck where I live. So... That's a really awkward situation for both of you because you get on the bus and he realizes, oh, this bitch doesn't have a car. What a loser. And then you realize, oh, this guy's a bus driver. What a fucking loser. However, the reason I can't drive is because I get dreadfully car sick and I also get bus sick. Vehicles in general just hate me. That's weird. So halfway through the journey, I vomit. Oh, no. Thankfully, there's only five people in the bus because it's so early, and I always carry puke bags just in case. Oh, that's crazy. So you're just the kind of girl that gets gets dick, gets shit-faced, and then vomits on a bus. You're a legend. I want to be your mate. Uh, But Steve starts laughing to himself. A 26-year-old dude is just giggling like a little schoolgirl. Anyway, I go to my classes and whatnot, and then I get the bus back at 7pm. Again, it's Steve who's driving, and he lets me on for free again. I'm hyped because I just saved $10 that day, and thankfully I don't vomit on the ride home. Yeah, but you know what? You're going to get to bus trip number three, and uh, it's either going to be like, yeah, if you want another free bus ride, we're going to have to do anal. I'm sorry. That's just how it works. I'm pretty sure it's in the fucking bus transit codes of conduct somewhere. You can't give more than three free bus tickets unless you get anal out of it this continues on for on for a week with a hurl here and there wait so you like vomit on the regular on the bus that's a serious condition fuck i just wouldn't take i would rather just why don't you just ride your bike do you get bike sick as well (laughs) dude imagine someone in the fucking lycra just vomiting while they ride their bike down the road That'd be the best shit ever. I I would pay to see that. This continues on for a week with a hurl here and there. And then I get a message from him. So we meet up and fuck again. What did he send you? Hey, baby. I can't get enough of you vomiting on my bus. The third time that I had to fucking clean it up. I was like, you know what? I got to go for round two here. That's the... You just have a strange life, Sarah. The next week, I vomit on every single bus journey. We meet up again on the weekend. What? Why is this dude meeting up with you after he sees you vomit? Oh, halfway through the email. So this is a long one. I haven't read it yet. Uh, He sits me down and explains that he gets turned on by me vomiting and purposely tried to make the journeys as shaky as possible so that I would vomit every time. What the fuck, dude? That's crazy. Anyway, he has a proposition. I do what he asks, and he'll never make me pay for the bus fares. Ah, here we go. This is a big deal for me as an 18-year-old broke college student. Those two weeks of bus rides saved me $100. How fucking expensive were your buses? But I don't want to get fined or banned from the bus company because I need it. And he said it was fine and that he would take the fall for anything like that. So he tells me the deal. He wants me to vomit on his dick. Oh, I told you, dude. I told you. It was like, if you st- I, I was like, if you still want free bus rides, it's anal. But it's even worse than that. If you still want free bus rides, you're going to vomit on his dick, man. I won't judge people for fetishes, but that is gross. But I'm seriously considering it because I could save a ton. I told him I need to consider it, and by consider it, I mean send you this email and ask what the fuck to do. Thanks in advance, you can't have a shit one. Man, girls are angels. Women are angels. You are just just too good for this world. Some guy has... A fetish where he wants a woman to vomit on his dick. And women are so lovely and and such a blessing on this planet that there are actually probably more than one of you guys that would consider it. I would never. I would never do that. Ever in my life. I'd be like, you know what? A bus ride isn't that good. I'd rather pay the five bucks. But there are a few women out there. God bless your souls. Who are just like, you know, if that's what he's into, if he's into 
driving like a rally car racer so I vomit in the aisles of his bus, I'll still go on a Tinder date with him and I'll consider vomiting on his dick because I'm just a woman and I am a blessing upon planet Earth. And you know, we don't deserve you, ladies. We don't. You're a saint. <laughs> you, should be, you should be a sainted by the Pope. And Saint Celeste Sarah will be forever known as a miracle worker for vomiting on Steve the bus driver's dick in exchange for free bus trips on the way to university. May she forever vomit upon bus driver's dicks in heaven for all eternity. God bless Celeste Sarah, the dick vomiter. Amen. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You... I don't know. I don't know what you should do. Here's the thing. Okay? You should... No, you shouldn't do it. Don't do it because you know what? It's, uh, it's not going to end there. Do you know what I mean? There's no, he has that, that specific of a fetish. Do you really think that he's ever found anyone ever who would, who would think that they would be okay to do that? Dude, vomiting sucks. It's not fun. No one wants to do that shit. No one, like, no one vomits and then is like, yeah, really turned on. Like, someone might be turned on by vomiting, but do, but vomiting itself is not a sexy act. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. I, I bet that you are the only woman he has ever found in his life that would even consider doing that for him. So do you think if you do it for him once, that's going to be the only time he'll want it done? Or will he be like, man... That was awesome. Three months later, if you still want to ride the bus for free, you're going to have to vomit in my mouth. <laughs> That's the next step, Sarah. You're going to be puking in this guy's mouth if, for free bus rides. I don't think you should do it. And uh, if... Because, uh, dude, this guy's an asshole. He's making you vomit on his bus. Because it turns him on. That's like if a woman got on the bus and she had big tits, he like went over speed bumps quickly so he could look in the rear vision mirror and watch her boobs bounce. You can't, that's, he's, he's basically sexually harassing you on the bus while you go to university. That's fucked up, Sarah. I don't think, uh, yeah, fuck this guy. You shouldn't do it. And, uh, honestly... If he keeps if he keeps trying to make you spew on the you should say no, I'm not gonna do it for free bus ride tickets. I'd rather pay for my bus ticket, you fucking freak. And if he keeps doing it, I would report him. No, even better. This is a better this is how you get your free bus tickets. You you save all of those messages that he sent to you and all the screenshots of him saying I love it when you vomit and I've been making you vomit on the bus. If you don't have them, Get him to write it down in a message. Say, hey, are you really doing that for me or were you joking? And then he'll go, no, I'm not joking. I'm being serious. Then you screenshot that and then you send him the screenshot and you say, hey, keep giving me free bus rides. Otherwise, I'm going to send this into your customer service and compliance team and you're going to get fired as the creepy vomit fetish bus driver and your boss will know that you're trying to get people to vomit on the bus because you get a chub while you drive, cunt. All right? That's what, that's what you should do. If you were really a boss, you wouldn't fucking blackmail the cunt. Um, but yeah, no, serious answer. Don't do it because there's no way that's where it ends. Because first you have sex. Then he, then he, then he saw you vomit once. He was really into it. Then he learned how to drive the bus in a way that would make you vomit every day. Yeah, like you said, the next week I vomit on every single bus journey. So he's doing that on purpose. So don't do it because he's clearly just taking what he can get from you. He's doing what he, think he thinks he can get away with. And I would say no. And if he keeps making you spew, I would report him because fuck that. You don't need to deal with some creepy fetish dude. And it's like, yeah, I don't don't judge him for having that weird fetish. I mean, he might find a girl who's into that shit, but like, the point is, he's forcing it on you. 
It'd be like if I'm really into feet and I just start taking people's shoes off when they get on the bus. It's fucked. It's, you can't do that shit. Yeah. I would say no, and I would say you need to stop making me spew on the bus, otherwise I'm going to report you, because uh, fuck that. And if he keeps doing it, actually report him, because you don't need to spew every day on the way to, on the way to fucking uni just to get an education, all right? Or get a bike. Start riding your bike to work, all right? It's definitely not worth it, Sarah. Um, fuck that guy. That's weird as hell. But you're an angel. You sound like a great person. And uh, best of luck with, with your Tinder dates. <laughs> Why do women even consider being with men? Because that's what, that's, you know, that's what you run the risk of. One minute, you match a 7 out of 10 on Tinder. The next minute, he's making you vomit on the bus and he wants you to... He wants you to gag on his dick so you spew on his balls. Like, that's... I'd be a lesbian for sure. I've never had a woman do that to me. <laughs> and I never will. Oh, man, that's crazy. Um, All right, I don't really have time for another question because that one went so long. But um, definitely update me, Sarah. I really want to hear what your decision is and what you do from here. Um... Because that's crazy. Dude, update me. I love, re- I love reading the updates. If I have answered a question of yours and you have a new update for it, send it into podcast at loosebeers.com and I'll read it up. Updates are my favorite part. If you have a question or if you have some life advice or if you would like to tell me why Coldplay is bad and I will educate you as to why you're wrong, uh, email me at podcast at loosebeers.com. If you would like to help me cr- keep uh, making my content better and, and uh, improving everything, consider supporting me on Patreon. It helps... Uh, Cut, it helps cover the cost of the podcast and uh, all of the other shit that I do. Um, and also, I was thinking of, um, I'm thinking of hiring an editor uh, for my videos because I, I honestly believe that's the only thing standing between me and uh, uploading like twice a week is is the editing side of things because. Like, writing and filming, I find really easy and really fun to do, but I don't really enjoy editing so much, and, and, and I'm also not that good at it. And I'm, and I'm, or, or, or I'm kind of good at it, but I'm really slow at it. And between, like, writing videos, filming videos, editing them, writing stand-up, performing stand-up, the podcast, posting merchandise, all of the shit that I'm doing... Uh, I, I think that I need to cut one of them out to remain consistent online, especially with a special coming up. So I'm considering hiring an editor. I've got a few people in mind, but I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on uh, me hiring an editor. Because I know for some reason on YouTube it's frowned upon. I don't know why. Like, all of the best people have fucking editors. I bet PewDiePie has an editor. Uh, I know for a fact Philip DeFranco does. Um, I don't know. It's uh, it's it's an interesting topic. All of the daily vloggers have fucking editors because how could you vlog every day if you also have to edit them? I don't know. Let me know. But uh, in uh, in future, I'm going to be picking up my content because there's no excuses. Um, so yeah, check my second channel for the VidCon vlog coming out uh, in the next couple of days, and then also uh, the vlogs that I start filming with my new. Camera, thank you very much for listening to the Spear and Sunday's podcast. I will talk to you next Sunday. It'll be another solo one. And until then, have an incredibly shit one. I'm going to listen to some Coldplay.